they don't want you to win your VA disability rating. I've heard this sentiment so many times from veterans. I'm gonna sort of break down and maybe push back a little bit on that, as well as reveal who's the proverbial they in this scenario, and the real truth might actually shock you as someone who's been immersed in this space for many years. I'm Jordan Anderson, VA Claims Academy. Let's get into it. Nearly every single day at this point, I hear almost the same story every single time, which is, hey, I was underprepared for my VA claim, whether they were with a VSO or they were with an accredited agent, uh, perhaps they were transitioning through the military and took the TAPS program where they teach you how to file a VA claim. And it ends up that they're consistently, again, under-equipped, not really ready to face the challenge of the VA disability claim because it's not intuitive, it's not easy, it is sort of a struggle. And ultimately we wonder, is this on purpose? Is this you know, an intentional under-equipping of the veteran? Or is this simply inadvertent, maybe some inefficiencies with the government and their trainings? That's a very fair thing to wonder. More recently, I have seen a very sort of alarming trend, which is people have been told by their VSOs to actually not file a personal statement, not submit their own lay evidence along with their claim. So they're being told to essentially shortchange themselves and file an unequipped, underdeveloped claim the very first time. And that's kind of what I want to touch on. Here's the deal. It's not that they don't want you to win your VA claim. From my perspective, it's that a lot of individuals are incentivized to make it to where you don't win the first time. And here's what I mean. When you win your VA claim the first time because you're well prepared, you're educated on the process, you submit a well-developed claim with all your evidence, your lay evidence, your personal statements, the nexus, you know, the in-service event, the diagnosis, it's too efficient for individuals who are potentially middlemen. I'm talking about a couple of parties here we'll discuss here in a second. But that's how people can be incentivized to make this process more drawn out, maybe a tad more confusing at scale. To put this more simply, some parties get more money the longer you wait or the more denials you get initially on your claim. Here's what I mean by that. A few months ago, we talked about the waiting process for the Veteran Board of Appeals, the VBA, their appeals process, right? It takes more than a thousand days for a hearing and that's not including your initial claim, how long that took, maybe a higher level review, maybe even a supplemental claim or FOIA request. That's just for the appeals process. So what happens when all this waiting time is in place, there builds up a lot of back pay. So the parties who are incentivized because they're paid on your back pay, they don't really want you to go win that claim the very first time a lot of times because self-preservation tells us that they get their cash, they feed their families when you are strung through long through the process and then you get a big fat paycheck eventually and they get to take 20, 30 percent of that. More recently we saw in the Washington Post an article that sort of gave an inside perspective into VA claims consulting companies and there were some shocking revelations where there were even claims coaches that worked for these companies who were having essentially a, a crisis, ethically speaking, because they were charging this company more than 20K sometimes, $20,000 for what ultimately was maybe 45 minutes of work. Again, if you would have filed your initial claim and done well the very first time, you wouldn't have had to really get you know, sort of taken for a ride on that process. That would have been 20K that would have been lost by these very large companies, some of which have spent more than $300,000 per month just in marketing alone. And let's be honest, I'm not a Boy Scout. I don't run a charity. I run a for-profit company. But my, my marketing budget is talking to you right now, right? But I also don't charge $20,000. As it stands right now, legally within the accreditation sort of process, right? So a VA accredited agent or a veteran service organization, these people, specifically the VA accredited agents, can't help you unless you've already filed your initial claim. So in order for the accredited agents to get their fees to get paid, 
you have to already sort of mess up your claim the first time. And a lot of these things are in Washington, D.C., right? A lot of the VSO headquarters, most of the VA accredited agent headquarters, this all is kind of sort of in the D.C. realm, and there are relationships in place between the free organizations even, between the paid law firms, between the paid accredited agents. So many people wonder, hey, what are these relationships truly like? Are they in cohorts, cahoots, things like that? I'm not going to speculate on that. However, I will say, of course, that this is taking place. People are under-equipped for their initial ratings. It just so happens that there's a lot of cash at stake. You know, in D.C., a lot of this funding is flowing, and it takes place only after your initial claim is filed. If there were a large cohort of individuals who were properly educated, properly equipped to file their claims the first time, a lot of individuals would be out a lot of cash that they've been enjoying for decades. So I want to be very clear here. You should not give up hope. The system's not stacked against you winning at all. Um, but again, maybe just the first go around, you might face some resistance, some friction, because although a lot of our tax dollars go to fund the VSOs, they still have relationships, financial relationships even, with these paid organizations such as law firms, accredited agents, people who only get to see you if you essentially lose your initial claim. Lastly, I'll say this, the main issue in this process, the entire elephant in the room, is a lack of education and equipping you to file your claim correctly the first time. So what can you do? Here's some actionable steps. Number one, you're already doing a great job. Keep watching educational videos like this. You're gonna learn it up really quickly, especially if you really get immersed into this process and it is worth getting immersed into because a tax-free passive income is a unicorn in the finance world. So it's worth it for you and your household. Number two, stay away from appeals. Stay away from the appeals process unless it's the very last resort. Don't go straight to the appeals process unless you know that you've submitted your personal statements correctly the first time, you've got nexus letters if needed. All of the things that I teach here on this channel and other great channels teach, do that very first time. You almost never need to file an appeal, but if you do, at that point you know it's the correct move. I'm Jordan Anderson. Hit the like button on this video if it helped and share it with someone who needs it. Cheers.